Welcome to Paul and Brian's 2022 weekend adventure to Southern California. I grew up in SoCal, so this was old home week for me. A patch just for SoCal? I've heard about you and the patches. Yeah, I've collected patches all my life, and I like to include them in trip videos. Just relevant ones, though, so don't worry. Anything more specific? SoCal is kind of general. Yes, I'm from Long Beach, well known for many things, but really famous for being home to the Queen Mary. All well and good, but what about college football? That's what we like. Have you ever been to the Rose Bowl? The Rose Bowl is pretty close to Long Beach, but nope, I've never been to a game there. Still an item on my bucket list, I'm afraid. Well, the Arizona Wildcats play there this year. Let's catch a game in the Granddaddy Stadium of America. Uh, okay, sure thing. I smell road trip. The drive from Tucson to L.A. is pretty much a straight shot on I-10, about nine hours long. Doable with two drivers, and we got to see two of North America's deserts, starting with the Sonoran. Yep, the Sonoran is the finest desert in the world because of its high biodiversity and productivity of plants, most notably the saguaro cactus, the namesake for an entire national park. The California state line is marked by the Colorado River, otherwise known as the American Nile. Hmm... Not much water here at the Blythe Crossing. Nope. Long ago, water from the Colorado River was allocated to the basin states by an agreement called the Compact. Over-allocated, actually. So now there's just not much river left downstream here. Check it out. The Compact was made in 1922, exactly 100 years ago. What a monumental moment that was for environmental history of the American Southwest. The river can be floated here, but without much flow strength, jet skis are more popular. Then, California's desert, the Mojave. Seems drier here, less plants. Ah, keen observation, grasshopper. The Mojave gets less rainfall, and its rains come mostly in one season, winter. So this desert just isn't as productive as the Sonoran. The Mojave's iconic plant, the Joshua Tree, is indeed pretty iconic, and also the namesake of its own national park. Our first destination was Manhattan Beach and its famous pier, just in time for sunset. Built in 1920s, the pier recently passed its centennial anniversary. The wiki page, linked below in the description box, understates things by saying that the pier is popular with locals, tourists, and photographers. Indeed. Every time I return to SoCal, I visit this pier, usually with local family and friends, and we always snap off lots of photos. It seems like the sun sets here every day. Imagine that. Wiki adds that the pier offers nice views of sunsets from multiple vantage points. Confirmed again, the sunsets here are simply spectacular. An added bonus is the building at the end of the pier, which happens to be an aquarium. This is the first time for me at the pier with the aquarium being open, and I gotta say, it was most excellent. The shark out front is a model, but the jellies and other tanks inside are real and absolutely mesmerizing. I had no idea about the Manhattan Beach Pier before this. Good start to our SoCal adventure, Paul. Uh, By the way, piers are popular for cartoon humor. Here's one that might as well be depicting Manhattan Beach. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I also heard you add cartoons into the vids. I'm down with that. Saturday was game day, uh, but first we went down coast to Huntington Beach and the Bolsa Chica. Hmm, never heard of Bolsa Chica, but can't wait to see it. Except breakfast first? Absolutely. There's no end of beachside diners along Pacific Coast Highway, but Woody's comes highly recommended. Man, the omelet there was delish bomb. (laughs) Good one. Sounding native SoCal after only mere hours of arriving here. To clarify, we got the California omelet, which is any omelet, but with an avocado sliced and diced on top. Yeah, and like I said, delish bomb. Bosa Chica is a coastal estuary attractive to all sorts of shorebirds, making it popular for birding and photography. Wow, you don't even need binoculars to see these birds. Yep. The herons and egrets are pretty easy to spot, and even mere casual birding results in an impressive trip list of species. And let me guess, this place has its own patch? Yes, yes, and you now qualify for one, Amigos de Bolsa Chica, congrats. I gather this place hasn't always been so lovely as it is now. Right. Throughout the 1900s, coastal wetlands were degraded by, or outright lost to, development, all in the name of progress. But the tide turned on that. Yuck, yuck. And now wetlands are being restored for their ecological value and aesthetic appeal. Not without a fight, I see. An argument has been that development is inevitable. All in the name of progress. And therefore, nothing can be done to avoid environmental losses. 
Nothing can be done, eh? That argument surfaces nowadays with climate. Well, success stories like the restoration of Bolsa Chica should give hope for taking action even on hard stuff like climate or ensuring that the Colorado River has water. Say, what's this building on the way back up coast? Ah, uh, yes. That's the famous tower house of Seal Beach. Built in the 1890s as a water tower, it's an apartment now. Available, I believe, for rent for short stays. Probably pricey, but I'm sure the ocean views and sunsets are totally rad up there. I'm putting this on my bucket list. The patch gives the exact waypoint location, but it's right next to Woody's Diner, so easy to find, no need to fire up navigation devices. Our midday attraction was the world-famous La Brea Tar Pits, located right smack dab in downtown Los Angeles. Sheesh on the traffic in LA. Is there a patch depicting all the cars here? Well, yes. Here's a patch for the LA traffic officer. One traffic officer for all of LA? Yeah, maybe not enough, but it's a start. After finally getting to La Brea, the first thing to see is the big pit that trapped mammoths from the last ice age, 10 plus thousand years ago. Fenced off, eh? Is this place still active geologically? Yep. I came here back in the 1960s on elementary school field trips. We were told to behave ourselves or else a swamp creature would reach out of the tar, grab us by the ankle and pull us in. That put an end to all the usual horseplay of fourth graders. Mighty impressive, the mammothness of Ice Age mammoths. Well, it wasn't for no good reason that the Ice Age animals became known as the megafauna. La Brea is one of the world's finest places to see Pleistocene megafauna because so many animals were trapped and preserved here. And these guys? Dire wolf. Bigger than modern wolf, the dire was especially abundant at La Brea. This wall has 400 wolf skulls, which is only a minor fraction of the entire collection here. Interesting, this exhibit. Try to pull an appendage out of the tar. Yeah, and how easy was it pulling a leg out of the goop? Not at all easy. What's easy is to see how anything that got stuck in the tar, even ever so slightly, was a goner, and how the tar preserves complete skeletons. A place this profound is bound to have lots of humor. Here's but one cartoon making fun of getting stuck in the tar. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Paul. Perhaps not hilarious, but certainly relevant here. Suffice to say, La Brea is an essential destination globally. Thanks for agreeing to squeeze this into our trip. By the way, I see it was a saber-toothed cat that made the entrance and the patch for this institution. Go cats! The main attraction of this trip was to attend a U of A football game in the Rose Bowl of Pasadena. Last year, I came out for the Arizona game in the LA Coliseum, thanks to a Boy Scout buddy who was a die-hard USC alumnus. Ah, I get it. This year completes the SoCal set with the game in the Rose Bowl against UCLA. Well done on the old bucket list. Both the Coliseum and the Rose Bowl were built in the early 1920s. Huh, so they're both celebrating their 100th anniversary? And the Boy Scout group my USC buddy and I were in, known as Tokwitz, started in 1925, therefore also nearing its centennial. The Coliseum has been a venue for many different events, including the 1984 Summer Olympics. By comparison, the Rose Bowl is home for UCLA football, as well as for the annual Rose Bowl game on New Year's Day. And it has hosted a few Super Bowls as well. And don't forget Caltech, also located in Pasadena. Tech used the Rose Bowl as their home yard before they dropped football entirely. Attendance wasn't great, and the Fighting Beavers claimed to have played in front of the most empty seats in all of football. Upon reaching the Rose Bowl and finding parking, we headed into the stadium. Awesome, as expected. Yeah, pretty incredible, all right. The colors on the neon sign out front are different now from what I recall watching games on TV. The rose used to be red. This year, the U of A game was played on the weekend of Veterans Day, so a lot of high school ROTC students were in attendance, and the UCLA band was fully present and accounted for. Fun. I was in marching band in high school, and therefore attended many football games. You were a high school football fan? Who knew? Yeah, no end of patches for high school football, what with the letter jackets and all. The U of A was the underdog in this game, by three touchdowns, no less. Is that bad? It's not good. However, games are won or lost on the field, not in Vegas, and the U of A kept up with UCLA the entire game. For example, here's a short clip of an Arizona touchdown, complete with a four-part arrangement of Bear Down, performed by my ensemble under video surveillance. Bear Down, Arizona, Bear Down. 
Such great seats we had, and fun singing by your UVS group. Not surprising you have your very own patch. Against the long odds, the Wildcats wound up winning this game 34-28. to Huge! A trip highlight on a trip loaded with highlights. As you know, I don't usually care about who wins games, but I have to admit, beating UCLA was fun, and witnessing the game at the Rose Bowl was extra fun. Bear down Arizona and go Cats! One more attraction to see on the way home to Tucson. Out in the middle of the Mojave is the George S. Patton Museum. I'm a history buff, so I insisted on this stop. In all the times I've driven between Tucson and SoCal, I've never stopped at this museum. Let's do it. This museum is located here because this was the Desert Training Center, which prepared American troops for fighting in North Africa during World War II. Patton led forces in that desert campaign using all sorts of tanks, many of which are on display here. After the Africa campaign was won, Patton continued serving throughout World War II, all the way to the Battle of the Bulge, pretty much the last gasp of fighting by Germany before surrendering. Patton's legendary leadership earned him a seat at this famous group shot of Allied generals. Patton is front row, second from left. Eisenhower, the supreme commander, is front row center. Patton also got his share of cartoons, like this one. Um, I think I get this one, but a little help? I am um, making fun of TED Talks here, I think. I'd guess that George's TED Talks were compelling. When Patton gave an order, he expected it to be followed. This museum wasn't just one more stop on a busy trip. Patton was really interesting, highly recommendable. In addition to the war exhibits, the first thing to see upon entering the Patton Museum is this 3D elevational block model of all of Southern California. A few hundred square feet in area, this model is exquisite. It's composed of some 270,000 pieces of construction material, heroic in its own right. This model was built to show where the aqueduct would go to transport water from the Colorado River to Los Angeles. And don't look now, but this model was created in the 1920s, yet another thing on this trip that is 100 years old. The 1920s were golden years for creating everlasting things. Good trip, Brian. A little bit of everything on this one. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, Paul, for suggesting a road trip and showing places where you grew up. UCLA and USC will be leaving the Pac-12 soon, so we won't have Wildcat games to attend in SoCal much longer. Mm, Too bad. We'll just have to figure out other reasons for road tripping here. I'll take a crack at drawing up next year's trip. Say, how about booking us into that tower house in Seal Beach? Yeah, maybe. And more California omelets? For sure, totally tubular.